Well, hello there, everybody. My name is Marley Bird, and in this video, I will show you how to make the Diamond Brocade Knit Dishcloth. I love making dishcloths because it allows me to play with different stitch patterns. This particular stitch pattern is made up using knits and pearls, and you get the diamond effect here by working a seed stitch pattern over a series of 12 stitches and 12 rows. This stitch pattern is in the center of a sea of garter stitch to prevent our dishcloth from rolling. I've also added a nice applied eye cord right here to the end so that way I can hang up my dishcloth on my faucet. The full list of the materials for this dishcloth is available at marleybird.com as well as the free pattern. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. Simply click on the link that will take you to the pattern page. There you will find the materials, the pattern, as well as something very special. This is an extra bonus just for you. You want to know what it is? At the bottom of that page, you will find a link for a free PDF download of the pattern in spreadsheet format. I love spreadsheet format because I can check off each row of instructions as I complete them and I can see where the pattern says to repeat X number of times and then I have the full set of instructions again and then repeat, you know, that that brings us one repeat so then we have the full set of instructions and then I carry on and I have all of the instructions for the rest of the pattern. I don't typically provide free PDF downloads like this in my patterns, but I often will write patterns in this format for myself. Many of the Marley's Minions have requested patterns in this format, so I thought I would give it a try right here with these dishcloth videos. I love making dishcloths. It's a great way to learn new skills and use up some of that stash cotton yarn we have. So why don't you go ahead, get your free pattern, grab some yarn from your stash and a pair of size seven needles, and we can get started. For the sample and in this video, I'm using Peaches and Cream Stripey Yarn. This is a self-striping yarn, but you could easily use a variegated yarn or a solid color yarn if you wish. I've also pulled out a pair of size seven knitting needles and I have already worked up the first several rows of the pattern. So before I carry on, I wanna go ahead and mark off that I have cast on 35 and I use the long tail cast on. And then I have knit all of these rows and I am ready to start row one of the actual body of the pattern. So let me go ahead and move this. And it is on this row where we will introduce stitch markers. And the stitch markers will help us keep track of the garter stitches at the beginning and end of the rows. So I am knitting five. So one, two, three, four, five. I will grab a stitch marker, place the stitch marker on my needle, and then I would carry on. And this is where there is a star in the pattern, and that means this is the repeat. So I knit one, bring my yarn between my needles to the front, purl one, bring my yarn between my needles to the back, knit nine, Bring my yarn between my needles back to the front and purl one. And that is one full repeat. You'll notice that is 12 stitches for the repeat. Now I will repeat that again. So I will bring my yarn to the back, knit one. Bring my yarn to the front, purl one. Bring my yarn back to the back, knit nine. and then bring my yarn back to the front and purl one. All right, so that is another repeat. Now I'm to my last six stitches. I will knit one, place a marker, and then knit five. I have officially established my pattern. The first five stitches will always be knit. 
the last five stitches will always be knit and the stitch pattern will be placed in between these markers. Now that we've completed row one, we can check it off of our list and carry on with row two. For row two, we begin with a knit five. So one, two, three, four, five. When you come to your marker, simply slip it over to the other needle. Now we will knit one, and you notice there is not a star before that knit one, but after the knit one, that is the repeat. So this is our repeat. Bring our yarn forward, we purl one. Bring our yarn back, we knit one. Bring our yarn forward, we purl seven. Bring our yarn back, we knit one. Bring our yarn forward, we purl one, back, we knit one. And then it says repeat from star to the marker and then we will continue from there. So we go back to the star, so we bring our yarn forward, we purl one, bring our yarn back, we knit one, bring our yarn forward, we purl seven, Bring our yarn to the back, we knit one. Bring our yarn forward, we purl one. Bring our yarn back, and we knit one. Slip our marker, and then we knit five. That's the end of row two. You can now check off row two and continue on to row three. Just a reminder, this is a 12 row and 12 stitch repeat. Row three, we begin with the knit five. Slip our marker. And then here is our repeats. We have a couple things going on. We have a star and brackets. And then there are instructions outside of the brackets that say twice. That means that everything inside the brackets we will do twice. So we will have a knit one and a purl one. That was once. A knit one and a purl one. That's twice. Now we knit five. Purl one. Knit one. And purl one. All right, so we would repeat that to one stitch before the marker. So we go back to the star, so we do knit one, purl one, that's once, knit one, purl one, that's twice, knit five, purl one, knit one, purl one, we're to one stitch before our marker, and we will knit that one. Slip our marker, knit five. It's the end of row three. Turn your work. Make sure you tick off that row so you don't get off track and begin row four. Row four has us start off with knit five. Slip our marker, purl one, and then now we have our repeat, which again is a set of brackets. So we have purl one and knit one inside the bracket, and that's one. Purl one, knit one inside the bracket, that's two. Now we have purl three. Knit one. Purl one. Knit one. Purl two. We will repeat that to the marker. Purl one, knit one, that was once. Purl one, knit one, that was twice. Purl three. Knit one, purl, whoops, purl one, <laughs> knit one, purl two. Slip our marker, knit five. 
see that? Okay. Turn your work, tick off row four, and let's begin row five. Once again, we begin with a knit five. Slip our marker. Then we have our star right here at the start. So we knit three, purl one. We have a bracket again, and this time we will do it three times. What's in the bracket? So we have a knit one and a purl one. That's once. Knit one and a purl one. That's twice. Knit one and a purl one. That's three times. And we finish up with a knit two. All right, let's do that again because we have to repeat it again from the star. So we go back to star. We knit three. Purl one. This is our bracket. We do everything inside the bracket a total of three times. Knit one. Purl one, that's once. Knit one, purl one, that's twice. Knit one, purl one, that's three times. And then knit one and knit two. We're to our last stitch, we knit one. Slip our marker, knit five. Pretty easy, right? As long as you just, I mean, it's okay to say all of this out loud, just like I am. I mean, literally I do the exact same thing here at my house as I'm working on the swatches or the samples. I'll say it out loud, okay? Everything in the bracket, two times. Everything in the bracket, three times. And I'll do like knit, purl, one. Knit, purl, two. Knit, purl, three. And then one of my kids inevitably will say, knit, purl, four. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not right. Anyways, okay, mark off row five, turn your work, and let's move on to row six. Row six, I know you already know what we start with, but it is a knit five to the marker and slip our marker. Then we have a purl one, and then this begins our repeat. We have purl three, knit one, and then we have a bracket. So we have purl one, knit one, that's once, purl one, knit one, that's twice, and that's all we're supposed to do at this time. And then we purl four. That's the end of that repeat, let's do it again. So we go back to star, which is purl three, knit one, purl one, knit one, that's one, purl one, knit one, that's two. Then we purl four. Slip your marker, knit five. Okay. That's the end of row six. Mark off your little tick mark on the sheet and carry on to row seven. You guessed it, we start off with knit five. Slip our marker, knit five. Purl one, knit one. Purl one, knit four. Now we will repeat that down to one stitch before our marker. So go back to star, which is a knit five. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit four. And the last stitch of the row, you knit one. Slip your marker and knit five. I love that at this point you can really start to see the chevron that is coming up to the point and now we're going to be going in the opposite direction and coming back out so that way we can get the diamonds happening here, okay? 
That's the end of row seven. Make sure you mark off row seven, turn your work, and let's start row eight. Knit five. Slip your marker, purl one, and then this is where the repeat begins. Purl three, knit one, purl one, knit one, that's one, purl one, knit one, that's two. And now purl four. Okay, this is where we will go back now to star and repeat that. So we have purl three, knit one, purl one, knit one, that's one, purl one, knit one, that's two, purl four, slip your marker, knit five. That's the end of row eight. Make sure you mark it off on your spreadsheet, turn your work, and let's go to row nine. We have our knit five here, and then slip our marker. We jump directly into our repeat, which is knit three, purl one, and then we have a bracket that we will repeat three times. We have a knit one, purl one, that's one, knit one, purl one, that's two, knit one, purl one, that's three and then we knit two. Whew. All right, let's do that again. So we have to repeat from star to the last stitch of the, before the marker. So we have knit three, purl one, knit one, purl one, that's one, knit one, purl one, that's two, knit one, purl one, that's three, and then knit two, Last stitch before our marker, we knit one. Slip our marker, knit five. There we go, it's starting to look really cool now. Can you see this? So we have all the C stitch coming in and now we're going to begin kind of coming back out to get the diamond, okay? So when I say out like this one will go this way, this one goes this way, this one goes this way, and then we're gonna get this diamond right here in the center. That's the end of row nine. Mark it off, turn your work, let's start row 10. Row 10 has a start of knit five. Slip our marker, purl one, and now we begin our repeat, which has a bracket. So we have a purl one, and then knit one, that's one, purl one, and then knit one, that's two. Then we purl three, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl two. Whew, that's a doozy. All right, so we're gonna repeat that again. We go back to star, which is actually the bracket again. So we have purl one, knit one, that's one, Purl one, knit one, that's two. Purl three, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl two. Slip your marker, knit the last five. Pretty neat how it looks on the wrong side and the right side. That completes row 10. Make sure you mark it off, turn your work. We carry on to row 11, which almost brings us to the end. So let's do this. 
when you mark off your row 10 and you're changing to the next sheet, I do want to remind you, it seems like a silly reminder, but I even catch myself, make sure you're going to page two if you're working with the same sheet I am, okay? So you wanna make sure you're on page two and we will begin right up here with row 11. All right, so here we go. And I have gone ahead and did my knit five and slipped my marker. So I'm ready to begin with the stitch repeat, which starts off with a bracket. So I will knit one and purl one, that's once, knit one and purl one, that's twice. Now I have knit five, purl one, knit one, and then purl one. It's the end of that repeat. So I go back to star, knit one, purl one, that's one, knit one, purl one, that's two, knit five, purl one, knit one, purl one, and I'm right here to the last stitch before the marker, and I knit one, slip my marker, knit five. Okay, so that's the end of row 11. Go ahead and mark off row 11, turn your work, and we can carry on to row 12. You start off with knit five, just like always. Slip your marker, and then we will knit one, and this is our repeat. Purl one, knit one, purl seven, knit one, purl one, knit one. Go back to the star, so we purl one, knit one, purl seven, knit one, purl one, knit one. Slip your marker, knit the last five stitches. Okay, row 12 brings us to the last row of the repeat. So from here on out, we will continue on repeating rows one through 12 two more times. So you will have completed rows one through 12 a total of three times before you finish off with the garter stitch. So if you were continuing on with the pattern, you would of course mark off your row 12 and then you would carry on. And so this would bring you back to a repeat of row one. So we would knit five, slip our marker, knit one, purl one, knit nine, and then purl one. We go back to star, so we have knit one, purl one, knit nine, purl one, and you're to the last stitch, you knit one. Slip your marker, and then knit to the end. Looking at this, you can see that we have now created a full diamond right here in the center and then two half diamonds on either side. That's what the stitch pattern actually creates. And then when you stack the row repeats on top of each other, we'll get a full diamond right here and a full diamond right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sample so you can get a better look at what I'm trying to explain here. Looking at the sample, you can see this is what we completed 
in the first set, this would be the second set, and this would be the third set. So you'll have three center diamonds completed when your entire dishcloth is complete. When you finish row 12 for the last time, that's when you would carry on in the pattern and you'd finish up with your series of garter stitch to match the garter stitch you started with. And you would bind off that final row. And when you come down here to these last two stitches of the bind off, you actually will increase a stitch to get to three stitches and then work an I cord. It's really quite easy. Let me show you how to do the bind off and then how to jump from the bind off to the I cord. When it's time to bind off your pattern, you will bind off knitwise, just like any other bind off. And what I mean by that is you will knit two stitches so that you have two stitches on your right hand needle and then have the back stitch jump up and over that front stitch and off. Make sure you do not tighten the stitch that's on your right hand needle remaining and then knit the next stitch off your left hand needle and then up and over. You might think to yourself, okay, I'm down to my last two stitches when you get to this point and in reality, you have three stitches here. So you do have to knit one more stitch and have your stitch jump up and over that one and now you're left with two stitches. You will knit front and back on this last stitch here, leaving you with three stitches on your needle. It's at this point you will begin doing the I cord. So you'll take your left hand needle and going through the stitches as if to purl, slip them over to your left hand needle. This will make your yarn over here on that stitch on this side of your needle, that's what we want. But you will begin knitting the first stitch over here. So you will knit all three stitches. Slip those stitches back to your left hand needle, so slip them back over to the left hand needle. And then knit three stitches. Notice I did not turn my work. Slip those stitches back and then knit three stitches. You continue doing this until your loop measures about two inches or on my sample I did it for 20 rows. So I actually wrote that in the pattern that you just do this for 20 rows. But this is essentially what you're doing. You're just making your I cord as big as you want your loop. And when you have it as big as you want it, then we will seam together the stitches on our needle to the first three stitches of the I cord. And I'll show you how I did that on mine as well. So let me just get a little I cord built up here. Okay, when your I cord is as long as you want it to be, or until you have checked off all the rows on your spreadsheet, totally up to you, either way, you will get to the point that it's time to cut your yarn. This is where a good pair of scissors comes in handy. When you cut your tail, make sure you leave about 10 inches of tail. It will make it easier for the seaming process. Okay, so we have our I cord here and I have pulled in some stitch markers and I'm going to use these stitch markers to help me find the V's that I'm looking for right down here at the bottom. So let's see, let's put that marker through that V and we're going to rotate it and let's put this marker through that V, okay? And those V's represent stitches. We know we have three stitches here, we just got to find them, right? And then if we turn, we can see we have a V right here. Can you see that? So we have a V right there. So now I have markers in all three of my V's that I know I'm going to join this, um, these remaining loops through, okay? So I can take my tail and my tapestry needle here and thread the yarn through the eye of a tapestry needle. It might take a little bit of a jimmy if your eye of the needle is a little bit small like mine, but you can do it. 
Once you get your tail onto your tapestry needle, it's then a matter of finagling the I cord to match it up to your project. I'm sorry to say my camera messed up when I was working on the I cord showing you how to do this little finishing. So what I have done is worked up a little swatch. It gotten it back to where the camera stopped working. So it's at this point you need to decide how you're going to take these loops and bring them down and connect them to those stitches you have pointed out. So what I like to do here is I am going to join this loop and we'll start off, let's see, we'll have that loop start off with this green one right here, okay? So I am gonna go into this one up here on the needle as if to purl, okay? So I'm gonna insert it as if to purl. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to go around the V the V stitch around the whole thing, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna bring it around the whole thing and I'm going to give it a tug so it's gonna like pull it closed a little bit, okay? You see that? Now I'm gonna come back up here to the first one on my needle and I'm gonna go in as if to knit and I will let that one go off of my needle. I'm gonna go into this one as if to purl and leave it on. And I'm gonna come down here to the next stitch, which would be this orange one, and I'm going to go through the orange one, okay? Come back up to the stitch on my needle, go in as if to knit, and I will take that off. I'm gonna go into this stitch on my needle as if to purl, leave it on, come down here, we're gonna go through the blue stitch now, I'm gonna go through both of them, come back to the stitch on my needle as if to knit and take it off. I can remove these markers. Once you have removed all of the markers, Give your yarn a little bit of a tug and you can see that your I-cord join is seamed up pretty well with the stitches here at the beginning. This is the right side of my fabric. This is the wrong side. And what I can do here is with my yarn needle still with my tail working through it, I can come through and just clean this up a little bit and at the same time weave in my tail. So I'm going to punch that through and kind of pull it and I think that makes that look a little bit cleaner but I do wanna make sure I'm looking at the opposite side. And I have this sort of bump right here so I'm just gonna go through that bump and begin to weave in my tail. And when I weave in my tail for dishcloths, I really make sure I weave in quite a bit and I typically will work what is similar to a duplicate stitch for the tail. And then I do thread it through the actual fibers of the cotton as I'm working through. Can you see that? I'm like through the fibers of the cotton. Just to help it stay in place. To me, I like to make sure I'm finishing my last bit of my tail like along the side. So I come up to the side, everything looks good, everything looks good. Snip it nice and close. You can see here, this is my I cord that I have done. And just so you can see what the other one looks like, there we have it. And there it is on the opposite side, right down there at the edge, okay? So if I move all this out of the way, I do have my tail here at the start to finish, but my I cord itself is right there. Looks pretty good. It's attached to my nice little tiny one repeat of the diamond brocade stitch pattern here. And you can see it just looks pretty cool. It's, it's such a simple, simple piece. So of course the finished sample has three repeats. This little sample we did together was just one re repeat, 
but you can do as many repeats as you want. As I mentioned, it's a 12 stitch repeat plus one, and it is a 12 row repeat. So use this stitch pattern wherever you want. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that the spreadsheet works for you and it's something that helps you stay on track with your dish cloth pattern. If it's something you like, please leave me a comment below and let me know um, that you enjoy the spreadsheet of the pattern to be able to tick off your rows as you work along. Don't forget to smash that like button and I will talk to you guys again soon. And um, I'm off. I'm going to go use my new diamond brocade knit dishcloth. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.